Scientist changes it on supervolcano. Could it blow again? Scientists are tracking changes at the giant supervolcano that lies under Yellowstone National Park, but they say there's no need to worry at the moment. The western part of the Yellowstone caldera is waning, said Ninfa Bennington, a volcano geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey and lead author on a paper in Wednesday's edition of the journal Nature. The caldera is the enormous volcanic crater left from the last time Yellowstone experienced a giant eruption, 640,000 years ago. It covers an area about 30 by 45 miles. The findings mean that the future of volcanic activity at Yellowstone is in the northeastern part of the park, and there's no chance it's going to blow anytime soon. This volcanic system is not capable of producing that sort of eruption, Bennington said. For now, Yellowstone's mud pots will keep boiling, the hot springs will keep steaming, the geysers will keep spraying, the earth will keep shaking and the fumaroles will keep venting. The massive underground pools of magma below the storied park are still red hot, ranging between 1,247 degrees and 2,512 degrees. Yellowstone is one of the planet's largest volcanic systems, a place where a plume of the Earth's molten core rises up through the solid rock of crust, heating and melting it to form reservoirs of magma two and a half to thirty miles below the surface. In the past this was often pictured as a single underground lake of lava beneath volcanoes, but newer mapping and imaging techniques make it possible to see the complex systems of reservoirs the magma had gathered in. An imaging technique that produces more precise maps of the large reservoirs of magma under the park shows large pods of deep magma leading up to more shallow ones closer to the surface in the northeast, which tie into the park's famed hydrothermal systems. To know how likely a volcano is to erupt, volcanologists calculate something called a melt fraction. It's the ratio of how much magma, which they call melt, to the total volume of crust. Think of the earth like a sponge, Bennington said, but instead of water filling the holes and crevices, it's molten rock. In a volcanically active area, there's a greater proportion of magma to earth. The higher the proportion of magma, the more eruptible the area is. The mapping was done using magnetotellurics that measure the electrical conductivity of what lies below the earth's surface. Melted rock, magma, is extremely good at conducting electricity, so it makes precise mapping of areas where magma is stored possible. The testing was conducted over several months by scientists from the USGS, Oregon State University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. What they showed was that while there are multiple enormous reservoirs of magma under Yellowstone, they're separated from one another. It would be difficult to mobilize into a single eruption because they're not connected, Bennington said. It's still possible that the northeastern portion of the park could erupt in a massive explosive eruption similar to those that have occurred at Yellowstone in the past 2.1 million years.